What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com, the deadlift and bicep tears. They seem to go hand in hand, but do they have to? Is it really a scary exercise? I mean, if you look at any of these videos here, you've seen them, the bicep tear compilation videos, the deadlift, right? It doesn't look nice, it's, it's pretty ugly. Are you susceptible to the same thing? I mean, because you should be deadlifting. We know the exercise is critical, but are you susceptible each time you lift that bar off the ground? Is it gonna happen to you? Well, I wanna break that down for you, show you why it's happening, and then learn how we can actually make sure it doesn't happen to you. Now, the most important thing is, guys will say, well, I, yeah, it is a dangerous exercise, people that think that, and they'll say, because look at all the tension that's on your arms. Look, I mean, look, let's say you have a heavy load here and, and your arms are straight, it's pulling down on your biceps, of course it's gonna tear something. Well, guys, if that was the case, I wouldn't necessarily be tearing down here. If all the tension was on the bar, I'd be tearing up here in the shoulder, right, proximally, the long head of the bicep tendon, or, you know, versus down, down here at the, at the elbow, the distal attachment. So that's not really what's going on. It, maybe people say, well, it's just all that stretch on the bicep. Well, if that was the case, then actually, right, let's take a look. If that was the case, I'd actually tear the pronated side at the top, not this side. Why is that? Because if I wanted to maximally stretch a bicep, we have three things we have to do. Number one, we have to straighten the elbow. Number two, we have to pronate the hand because the bicep's a supinator. And number three, we'd have to get our arm into extension, right, behind our body. Well, that's exactly what's happening with the off hand here, the pronated hand. That's the one that would be tearing if it was all about stretch. As opposed to what we're really seeing is all of them happening on this side. So the, real, the two commonalities are that it's because of we're using a, a mixed grip. We got one hand under and one hand over. Right? And the one that's under is the one that tears. And the second thing is these always happen, at least 95% of the time, in that last 10 to 20% of the range of motion as we approach lockout. And why is that? Well, it does come down to tension, but it's actually tension that you're inadvertently putting into the bar with your biceps that's causing that problem. So you are causing this problem. If you did the exercise correctly, you wouldn't be at the risk of doing this to your arm. So how is that? Well, if we look here at the bar, when I set up, right, there's a factor of stretch happening here. But again, combined with tension. When I go to set up at the bar, I grab under, I grab over, right? And when I, and I stand up and I come to the top, my arm is actually going from a position relatively in front of my body, right? If I were to stand up here, now obviously the bar is coming straight up my body, but just look at the position of the arm here. I'm gonna stand up and leave it right where it is. You see it's away from my body. My shoulder's actually in a bit of flexion. This would be neutral here. It's actually in a flexed position. So going back to what we just talked about from a bicep stretch, it's actually taking a little bit of stretch off of the bicep there, right? And the fact that my arm is supinated here is also taking some of the stretch off of the bicep. The only thing that's stretching the bicep at this point is the straight elbow, right? So, but when I get to the top, when I get to the top of the lift and I'm up here, now the arm is going from a position in front of my body as it rides up my bar, my, the bar rides up my body, to one more on the side of my body here. Now I've gone from a flex position at the shoulder to more of a neutral towards extension, and that is the position that could put additional stretch in the bicep. But even that wouldn't matter unless you were doing something wrong, and that is applying force into the bar at that moment, and that's the problem. See, when I get here, and I know the bar has to continue to ride up those last couple inches. The lockout is tough. The lockout's the part where people struggle. You see guys all the time doing the, you know, basically humping the bar to get it up. They can't get that last couple inches. Well, they think in their heads, the bar has to come up, so what they do is they try to cheat with a little bit of bicep tension, curl the bar up if I have to. Try to pull it up from underneath with my stronger hand. And then I can almost, you know, catch the bar and get it the rest of the way. It's like a self-spot. That's the problem. You apply that tension to the bar at the moment. You just went from a somewhat shortened bicep to an even longer bicep to get it here is the moment that bicep has had too much. And if you don't believe me, guys, the same concept here. When muscles tear, it applies in other ways too. Like if you look at a, at a, 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 a fly, which you know I don't like the unsupported bench fly, it's not necessarily just a stretch. If I were to go take my arm and put my arm all the way back here, that's an enormous stretch in my pec right now, right? More than any of us would ever have during a fly. That's basically with my hand on the floor at this point. There's no risk here of tearing my pec. You can do the same thing. You know there's no risk. You don't feel anything other than a, a decent stretch. 
What we need to do though is realize that once we apply tension, that stretch doesn't even have to be this great. That stretch could be out here, but when you apply the tension, it's enough to cause a potential tear of that tendon, an overload, a quick snap. Same thing at the bottom of a bench press. It's the tension with a moderate amount of stretch that could cause that to pop. And the same thing with hamstring injuries. I'm a, I'm a big hamstring rehabber because I, I understand the mechanics. It's usually never the leg that comes out in front, right? It's, if, this is, if it was the, 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 the lengthening and stretch on the muscle, it would be the one that comes out in, in front because with my knee straight, my hamstrings are stretched. With my hip inflection, my hamstrings are stretched maximally. But it's not that. What happens is, is the leg that hits the ground, and as it straightens, we apply stretch to the hamstring because the knee is straightening, but we have tension because of the act of hip extension. And it's right there, it goes pop, and then you see the guy, you know, hop. So when it comes to any muscle tearing, in this case the biceps, it's a factor of stretch and tension, but the stretch can be greatly minimized, right? It's not about the full stretch. We already demonstrated that. The stretch can become greatly minimized when the tension becomes higher. So if you're gonna do this exercise, and you wanna do it right, you load up the bar, do as much as you can, but do one thing for me. Make sure that when you set up, you actively engage the triceps, right? It's so simple, but actively engage the triceps. It's gonna do two things for you. Number one, when I grab the bar, and if I'm gonna use a mixed grip, if I engage the tricep here, actively engage the tricep, as I come up, I've reciprocally inhibited the action of the biceps. Right? We can't shorten the joint in this direction if I've got active contraction in the opposite direction. So I've reciprocally inhibited, taking the bicep contraction out at its most vulnerable point. And by doing so, we've also added to the fact that I've got stability of the scapula because of the long head of the triceps attachment to it. And that's a great thing because we know that in order to pull, we want to have maximum stability of your upper torso, be tight. And we could do that by having our shoulder blades down and back and having active contraction and tightening of the triceps that will add, add to that stability from below. If we have that in place, we're good to go. You're not gonna have that, that even temptation to have that momentary contribution of the biceps to try to get you up to the top. Secondly, you can change your grip. It'd be a lot easier, but old habits die hard. Guys do this because there's usually a weakness in their grip and it allows them to pull more weight by having that underhand, that stronger hand helping out. But a double overhand grip or learning the hook grip, a little uncomfortable at first, but if you learn it, it's gonna help you in the long run. Both of those would be better alternatives. If you're gonna use straps, fine, but realize that again, you're using kind of a band-aid here for the underlying reason that you don't have good grip strength. You're gonna to wanna to kind of use that you know, to, to, as an impetus for you to continue to work on your grip strength in the, in the long run. But hopefully guys, you guys understand now exactly what is causing this. And more importantly, you have the weapons now to make sure it doesn't happen to you. I don't want you to show up in another bicep tear compilation video. It doesn't need to happen. The fact is, guys, if you put science behind the strength and you apply what you know, what there is to know about anatomy to all the lifts that you do, you have a much better chance to avoid these types of things happening. If you're looking for a program, guys, that puts the science back in strength in everything we do, head over to athletics.com. All of our programs as a physical therapist, it's impossible for me to separate the two. Strength, conditioning, smart training, it all goes together. If you're looking for our videos, guys, and you haven't already subscribed, please do so and turn on your notifications so you never miss one of those. And let me know what you want me to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, guys. See you soon.